Welcome to another episode of See Things From Our Side. I'm your host, Taj Tashambe. And today, look, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Nick Dehasia. Nick is the CEO of the Oakland Zoo, one of my favorite places to go in the entire city and one of the best leaders we have in the community as well. Can't wait to sit down and talk with him. It's an interview you surely won't want to miss. Let's go. Nick, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, Nick, give us a little bit of your background. You've been the CEO at the zoo now for a few years. That's right. And take us back. Take us back through your journey on how you became a leader in in the space. You know, it goes back a little while. I mean, I'm an urban kid. Uh, okay. Lived in cities my whole life. Uh, and that's what I love about being here in Oakland. But my journey started in India. Born in New Delhi. Moved when I was young to the U.S., uh, moved around the U.S., but landed in New York City. Wow. And spent most of my time there, and then 26 years ago, moved out to the Bay Area. And uh, found my home, moving through different places in the Bay, and then found my home in Oakland, and, uh, and then ultimately found my way to the zoo. Well, take us through some of the things that are featured attractions at the zoo in Oakland today. I mean, it's one of the most well-known places to visit in the city. I remember right. being there a lot in my childhood, growing up in Oakland, my kids love the zoo. What are some of the things that people love to go see and, and visit? You know, I mean, there's there's something for everybody in Oakland and certainly at the Oakland Zoo. So, you know, we're known elephants, African elephants. Sure, sure. Known for African elephants, one of the few zoos in California that has them. But, you know, if you're a giraffe lover, tiger, lions, you know, grizzly bears, black bears, we, we've got something for everybody. And, and again, if you want small little animals, you know, whether it's snakes or, or frogs, we've got that all. I love it. I love it. So I've also seen a lot in the news around some of the animal rescue that the zoo also participates in being a leader in providing resources to animals that are orphaned or have been injured in wildlife or in domestic areas. Take us through some of the work that you guys do in that space as well. No, I love that. And that's, that's what makes the Oakland Zoo unique, right? There are 240 zoos and aquariums that are accredited across the United States. Wow. But we stand up being bold and being different in Oakland. So we just rescued two tigers from a backyard zoo in Oklahoma. Wow. Now imagine Tiger King, Joe yes. Exotic. Yes. You know, animals that are there for entertainment that shouldn't be there for entertainment. Animals that are bred, you know, forced hybrid between lions and tigers, pay for play type of facilities that need to be shut down. We had the opportunity, got a call. We held open our tiger exhibit, got a call from somebody in Oklahoma saying, hey, here's this facility. This is what it used to be. Sure. These tigers in small, small, the size of this carpet right here, wow. living their lives, hadn't touched grass, hadn't touched the ground. So we shut down that facility. We brought two tigers to Oakland. We moved two to sanctuaries that are accredited. That's just one example of being bold Absolutely. at the Oakland Zoo, being bold for Oakland because that's what people want. Absolutely. And kudos because you guys get a lot of of news and attention around the work you do in the rescue environments. And I just want to say thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, it, you know what? It's it's an expectation. I will tell you from a public standpoint, right? The Oakland Zoo is 100 years old in 2022. Yes. You know, zoos, everybody has a different perspective on a zoo. And, and certainly over the last 100 years, we've learned and grown and sure. gotten better. And, you know, what used to be voyeuristic in, in mm -hmm. a backyard kind of peering in, you know, fundamentally, the animals are not there for an entertainment, right? You know, and that's what's different about a lot of zoos, but especially here in Oakland, right? They live their lives there. We go home, right? So we have to give them the best habitat, the best experience, the best care. Fundamentally, the well-being of the animal is so important, and that's what's critical. So, a hundred years, twenty twenty-two centennial for the Oakland Zoo. Tell us a little bit of the history of the zoo that people may not be aware of. I know it's it's moved from its original location to Nolan Park. Is that correct? Co correct. Yeah. I mean, just imagine June 6th, 1922. Wow. Henry Snow, a naturalist, a collector, went out to Africa, 
brought some animals back. That's what conservation was a hundred years ago. But you know, here in downtown Oakland, 19th and Harrison wow. started the Snow Museum with all of his specimens coming in and some live animals. And that's how it began, uh, right here at Lake Merritt. And then ultimately moved up to Joaquin Miller Park in 1920s, and then to Nolan Park where it is today in 1939. So since that time, we've now been in Nolan Park. Wow, and tell us, just what's the topography of Nolan Park? How large I and mean, how expansive are your grounds? And do you have room for, for future growth? As yeah, well? well, I mean, Nolan Park, beautiful park, right? I mean, we think about some of the biggest parks in, in Oakland. Nolan Park is a 500 acre park. Wow. Um, you know, surrounded by Highway 580, you've got homes on, on multiple sides connecting to the East Bay Regional Park District. So the yes. zoo is 100 of the 500 acres. Um, but you're starting, you know, uh, down at the base and rising up 300 feet in elevation. Beautiful views looking out to downtown Oakland, but San Francisco, the Bay and everything. Amazing. And recently you opened a new observatory at the zoo and there's a gondola and new exhibits. So t take us through yeah, some of that. Absolutely. I mean, California Trail. California, California Trail was the new exhibit that opened in 2018 with a gondola. Just imagine a ski gondola. Yes. One of the only ones in the United States here in Oakland taking you from the base of the zoo up the California That's Trail. Old. What is California Trail? I mean, this is our story of um, California native animals to really talk about, you know, grizzly bears, mountain lions, California condors, bison, jaguar, yes. the majestic species that roamed throughout California. And to really tell that story, not just the animal story, sure. the human story, the cultural story, which becomes really important to share. But that Absolutely. is opened in 2018 to wonderful excitement and, and really elevates what the Oakland Zoo is, not just in Oakland, but in California and across the country. Sure, and thinking through just some of the exhibits that are there with the California Trail, what are, what are some of the more popular uh, attractions that visitors, specifically with the California Trail, like to indulge upon? Yeah, there are a few of them. I mean, I'll start with the American bison. So mm. bison used to roam in Northern California and across the United States in millions and millions. Wow. And because of the Indian Wars were decimated yes. and killed, we had an opportunity to work with the Blackfeet Indian tribe in Montana mm. to bring pure blood bison from Canada back to their reservation and to have 13 of those come to the Oakland Zoo. So just imagine a lineage from the 1800s, That's the amazing. offspring go back to the Blackfeet Indians. So it's an animal story, but it's a cultural story. It's the story of our ancestors. And here they are in the Oakland Zoo to really shed light on that. It's a, just a beautiful. We also have the California condor. Yes. California condor is a majestic animal, the largest bird in the United States. Right decimated down to 22 birds in the 1980s, had to be pulled off because of lead toxicity and poisoning. Wow. And they're now making a rebound now, 500 in the wild and in captivity. So you can come see two of the ambassador animals, California condors, just an incredibly majestic species. And that's what this exhibit California Trail is about. It's about species that were in decline, species that are extinct, the sure. grizzly bear on grizzly our state bear. flag no yes. longer in California. We have four rescues that we were able to bring in. They were gonna be euthanized. Wow. Brought them to Oakland to be able to share that story. So when you're walking around the trail, not only are you taking in the views, right. incredible views of Oakland and San Francisco, but you're also getting an understanding of what was California's natural history. Sure. And to really learn that story. And, and to be honest, to have fun while you're doing it. have fun, exactly. And speaking of the grizzly bear, you mentioned that we got one here. That, that's right. Thank you, Nick, for bringing us some <laughs> flavor to the set today. So what what happened to the grizzlies in, in California? Was it similar to the bison that they were just... Yeah, I mean, look, like most animals, extinction is uh, a significant problem. Absolutely. And with the grizzly bears, you know, last one were shot by humans in mm -hmm. the 1920s. That was it. Wow. We pushed them to extinction, as we're doing, frankly, with a lot of other animals, yep. elephants and giraffes and tigers. So we were fortunate to be able to uh, identify four bears in Alaska that were raiding garbage cans. They were going to be killed. We said, hold on. We'll take them. We'll take them. Bring them sure, to Oakland. Sure. We'll give them a life. And you know what? They are happy as can be. They don't yes. care about the visitors. They're enjoying their three acres, their swimming pool. 
Um, but it is, you know, there is a, a story here about just our human relationship Absolutely. to nature. Absolutely. And what we need to do and what we need to change. So when you think about the environment and the habitats for each animal, take us through what that care is like at the zoo and what we can do also to, to help in supporting you know, different habitats. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it is fundamentally, you know, animals should be in the wild. Sure. But there are situations where animals need rescue. Right. Uh, they need help from illegal wildlife trade. Uh, wildfires in California have yes. been burning, and we're rescuing our 20th mountain lion recently. Wow. So what do animals need? I mean, fundamentally, they need the best medical care that they can get, and that's something that we deliver at the zoo. Sure. The space that they have, the habitat, has to be large, has to be enriching, has to be complex Right. in terms of the terrain and the rocks that are there and the trees. Uh, we got to make sure that they are psychologically doing well, sure. that they're mentally stimulated, that they have the right food. Um, I mean, being an animal at the zoo is sort of a wonderful thing. You get, you get fed, <laughs> you get cared for. Right. Uh, it's a lot easier sometimes than being out in the wild. But, Absolutely. Um, it's, it's a labor of love. I see, I see. And take us through the, the visitor experience. What days of the week is the zoo open? What are the hours of operation? And how many people come to the zoo each year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nearly a million people are coming to the Oakland Zoo every wow. year. Uh, you know, we're open 10 to four generally. We'll expand in the summertime. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's a wonderful experience. Look, come to the zoo and experience being outdoors. There's nothing like it. Um, as, as incredible as Oakland is and the parks that we have and the vibrancy that this town is, the zoo adds to that. Absolutely. And it creates that flavor that's a little bit different as well. So it's a wonderful time to get outside um, and certainly uh, challenging during COVID. Yes. Being open back up again and people just want to be outside. They do. They do. My kids love the zoo. Yeah. And thinking through what happens at the zoo, what are some of the programs and annual events, now that we're post-COVID-ish, yeah. what can people look forward to experiencing at the zoo you know, next year or, or even this in this time period? What are, what are the things that you guys have planned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have events all year round, right? Sure. So we have our annual fundraiser called Walk in the Wild. Oh, yes, that was uh, in amazing. In June, right? Yes. In June every year, come out. You can dress in your leopard prints. You can dress <laughs> how you want. Um, come stroll the zoo and, and have fun supporting the institution. Absolutely. But there are a lot of other events uh, throughout the year that you can engage in. Um, we have events that uh, visitors can go into exhibits, not with the animals there, but you know, <laughs> we can put enrichment or food sure. out in the exhibits and experience what that. Well, you have the like. petting zoo, right? Isn't there a petting zoo? That's right. There's, uh, you know, it used to be called the baby zoo back in 1960s, and wow. uh, now we call it the children's zoo. And yes, um, you know, opportunity for for kids to come out and uh, you know some of our greatest hits uh, that you can spend time with and walk around. So, you know, there's always something happening at the zoo, right, from an right. event standpoint. But we're out in the community. So right. we want to engage in the community and, and do community cleanups in sure. Oakland and around the waterways in Oakland. Um, we're engaged in a plastics cleanup and will okay. be. So lots to do, whether you're physically coming to the zoo or engage with us when we're out in the Oakland community. I love it. I love it, Nick. You're a great spokesman for the zoo as well. I have to <laughs> tell you, you're on point. So when I think about the future of the zoo and really just the conservation ecosystem yeah. of, as what we're talking about today, Tell us, you know, what do you guys have planned going into 2023 and beyond? What are the things that you're working towards in terms of fundraising goals or how can the public be more supportive of the work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, I'll, I'll take a serious tone for a moment, okay. right? We're 100 years old as an institution. We as humans have to have uh, and really intrinsically value animals. Sure. And we got to value people. Right. And that's the number one thing I talk about because... You know, when you think about it from a historical perspective, the Environmental Protection Agency started 50 years ago. Mm. The Endangered Species Act 50 years ago. The first Earth Day was 50 years ago. Right. In the millennia that we've existed, our relationship to nature and how we interact, we're still just learning. So as we go forward into the future, you know, my goal, our goal at the zoo is to make sure that kids are connected to animals and are connected to the learning. Sure. And that's what becomes fundamentally important. So we have a lot of educational programs, right? right? You can come to zoo camp, you can come to fall break camp, winter break camp, great opportunities to engage and learn at the zoo. Events that we'll be doing into the future to really, not just moving beyond our 100th anniversary, 
but really celebrating into the future. But connecting kids, critically important to the environment, to the ecosystem, to animals, that's where the future is because we are, you know, we're, we're on the edge. Absolutely. Uh, of this movement and, and we're losing species at a dramatic rate. So that's always my goal is how do we connect people mm -hmm. to the animals? Uh, and if we can do that well, and we can give them an experience at the zoo, maybe then they'll get to the regional parks, they'll get to Yosemite, they'll even go out to the national parks throughout the United States. So to me, that's what's critical in Oakland is connecting kids to animals, to an experience, to a learning. I love it. So strategically, Nick, take us through the future plans for the zoo. What else are you guys looking to embark upon in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I want the next environmental leader to come out of Oakland and to come through the Oakland Zoo. Mm. That's what's really critical is we need to give access to the zoo for everybody. It's not just those who have the ability to afford it, sure. but reaching deep into our Oakland community. And there are people and kids who are hungry. They're hungry yes. to come to the zoo. They're hungry to learn and giving them an opportunity so that they can be, it could be the next Dr. Jane Goodall. Right. It could be right. the next conservationist leading into the future. So that's what I'm excited about is giving people that opportunity and turning them on and giving them a connection. You know, that's really important because when I think of cities like LA, you know, knowing kids that had never seen the beach, right? And I think of us having a, a world-renowned zoo in Oakland, every child in this area should have an experience at the zoo and something to build from. A absolutely, that, that's one of my number one priorities for the zoo is giving that experience to every kid and not just kid. Sure. A kid of all ages. Absolutely. Adults, seniors, having that opportunity to have that experience because everybody deserves that. And that's where we will have a better future together, that connection between humans and animals. Sure. Well, let's talk about the, the real uh, sweet spot here. I know you have a financial background. So in terms of dollars and cents, where can people contribute if, if there is an opportunity to support fundraising efforts in the future? current and beyond, where, where can people yeah. go to support? Well, listen, the number one most important thing is come to the zoo. <laughs> come Absolutely. and spend your dollars. If you're outside of Oakland, come in. It's a beautiful place to be, not only in Oakland, but at the zoo. Right. Spend your dollars on a visit. Buy a membership to support the zoo. Um, and how much is a membership? It, it's a little short of about $200 okay. for the full year. Wow. Incredible suite of benefits that you can have, but you know, those are the most important. Come, come visit and experience. Absolutely. If you're a little bit further away, look, go online, oaklandzoo.org. Uh, you can find ways to donate, donate to particular causes, donate to the animals. Um, we have wish lists of items that are needed uh, on there. So, uh, and certainly come to our fundraisers and other events. Definitely, definitely. Well, Nick, we look forward to participating and being a partner with Visit Oakland, as well as just our entire ecosystem. There's so many great things you guys are doing. And we look forward to continue supporting you. Absolutely. We love this city. This zoo has been in Oakland for 100 years. And we're going to be here for another 100. And, you know, this is amongst everything in Oakland and one of the most important assets. Great. Well, thank you, Nick. I appreciate thank the time, you. my friend. You bet. Hi, I'm Nick the Hedge, and you're watching See Things from Our Side.